This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 11, Section 1, Part 4, Balancing Chemical Reactions or Balancing Chemical Equations. So make sure you read as you write, pause, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So I'm actually not going to spend the time to go over this because I'm going to go through these steps over and over again as we do these example problems. But I did want to have them in your notes packet that you can always refer back to them. All right, so number one example is the Haber process, and this is the reaction to make ammonia. It's written as nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas yields ammonia. So the first thing we need are the formulas for each of our substances in order to start balancing. So let's think about what they are. Nitrogen and hydrogen, hmm, those remind me of Cliff H. Braun. Yeah, those are diatomic molecules. We want to remember that nitrogen is going to be N2 and hydrogen is going to be H2. Now, ammonia is actually the common name for nitrogen trihydride. Uh, and again, there's a common names kind of like water, right? Water is really dihydrogen monoxide, right? But we know it as a common name for water. So ammonia is actually really, really important. So that's why they even gave this whole reaction an actual name. All right, so now let's write down that equation. This time I did put the G for gas because it told us that it was nitrogen in the gas form. It's up to you if you want to do that or not, but make sure that you leave space in front of the nitrogen for your coefficients. I did the same thing for hydrogen and I did the same thing. Ammonium is actually a liquid. So if you want to put the G's and L's, they're fine. If not, no big deal, but please make sure that you leave yourself a enough space to put numbers coefficients in front of your substances. All right, so first thing, how many of each element on both sides? So I'm going to pull out my nitrogen and my hydrogen. Again, keep your hydrogens and oxygens last. So hopefully you can think of two and one for nitrogen and two and three for hydrogen. So we notice that this reaction is not balanced. All right, so again, pause and fill in those blanks. So basically what I said, we pulled out those elements. The elements are not balanced. We're going to start at the top of our list. We're going to go back and forth until each element has the same number of that element on both sides. So remember, I don't need four nitrogens and four hydrogens on both sides. I just need the same amount of nitrogens on both sides and the same amount of hydrogens on both sides. And real, real important, the only thing we can do is put numbers in front of our substances. We cannot change the subscripts, otherwise that would change our uh, substance altogether. All right, so let's look at those nitrogens. Since the nitrogens are not balanced, one way to do this is to put a two in front of ammonia to get two nitrogens on the right side. So now I did that, now we actually have to change our amounts on the list. So the two goes to the nitrogen, that's good because that's what I wanted to change. And if I were you, again, I would just do a, a cross off and put the new amount there because if you keep erasing, if I ever need to check your work, uh, I'm, I, this is an easy way for me to say, well, you started with two nitrogens to begin with, so that was the wrong starting point. Um, so this way, at least you can kind of keep track of what's going on. I also want to remind you that the two doesn't just affect the nitrogen, it's also going to affect the hydrogen. Remember, those coefficients affect every single element in that substance. So I'm going to cross off the three and put a six there. Well, woohoo, the two nitrogens on both sides are nice and balanced, but oh no, we have different amounts of hydrogens on both sides. So we're not balanced, we got to keep on balancing. Oops. Yeah, here we go. So uh, I have six hydrogens on the right side. How am I going to get six hydrogens on the left? I'm going to put a three there. So again, if I put a three there, I got to change my amounts. Woohoo! Now I have the same number of nitrogens on both sides and the same number of hydrogens on both sides. So we are now balanced. So make sure to put that in your notes. So now that we're balanced, I want to remind you of that law of conservation of mass, matter, and energy that tells us whatever goes in must equal what comes out. So, and this is again that nice visualization to show you those diatomic molecules and how many of those elements we need and how many compounds we need in order to make that reaction balanced. All right, so this is also some hints. 
that I suggest, and I'm always going to show you the elements under the arrow. This way you're only listing them one time. And also really important to keep those hydrogens and oxygens last. And in that order, H, O. And the reason for that is because oxygen a lot of times is on its own. And so it's real easy to balance at the end. One thing I want to also bring to your attention is, yeah, after you get used to this, you're not going to have to make that list every time. It's going to be up to you. And you're going to see in the practice problems, I don't even give you space anymore to put the list, but you are more than welcome to put the list either in the margins or on scrap paper. All right, so example two, I'm going to try to explain to you what I mean by the lowest common multiple dealing with coefficients and changing coefficient numbers, meaning just because you start off with a two as a coefficient doesn't mean you don't have to, you might, I should say, means that you might have to change that to a three or a four or a five later on in your balancing. All right, so here is the second example. Can you pull out those elements and come up with how many on each side? Hopefully you paused and you came up with iron and oxygen. And hopefully you came up with these values. Again, pretty simple. We're only dealing with two elements. They're not going to always be simple, though. All right, so let's start with iron. Well, that's easy. I'm going to put a 2 here, and I'm going to cross off the 1 and put a 2 there. Now I have two irons on both sides. Woohoo! But now let's look at the oxygen. This is what I mean by the lowest common multiple. There's no number multiplied by two to give me the three that I need. And there's no number multiplied by three to give me the two that I need. So the lowest common multiple between these two is six. So if I take two times three, that will give me six. And if I take three times two, that will also give me six. Most of the time, I will tell you that the lowest common multiple will basically be those two numbers multiplied together. Now that's an easy way or an easy fix, I should say. So let's get six oxy uh, oxygens over here by putting a three. So I can change my two to a six because I'm multiplying out. Now, if I want through uh, six oxygens over here, I have to put a two coefficient in front of the whole compound. But now let's look at this. And I like to do things in order. So that two is going to affect my iron. So two times two gives me four. And I like to do it in order so I never forget to go back. So if I do it in order, it, it makes more sense to me. So again, that two times the three for my oxygen changes it to a six. Woohoo! So my sixes, I should say my oxygens now are balanced with sixes on each side. But now if I look at my iron, I messed those up. Well, that's again an easy fix. This is where I got to take away that two and now replace it with a four to get four irons on both sides. So again, hopefully that makes sense. So pause the video, make sure that you have the correct coefficients and make any notations that you wish about that lowest common multiple or and changing coefficients if needed. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now we're going to be dealing with parentheses and elements in multiple substances. All right, here we go. So again, pull out your elements. I have zinc, phosphorus, ooh, yeah, yeah, phosphorus first, then hydrogen, then oxygen. So now that we pulled out the elements in the correct order, can you pause and try to see if you can come up with the correct amounts of each? So hopefully you got for zinc pretty easy. Phosphorus, pretty easy. Hydrogen, not so much. I see hydrogen in two places. So I'm going to take my 2 times 1 plus my 3 gives me 5 total. And over here is pretty easy. There's only 2 there. But my oxygen, again, my oxygen has some here and some here. So 2 plus my 4 is going to give me 6 total. Same thing over here. I have 8 plus my 1 to give me my 9 total. So those are the initial amounts of elements on both sides. All right, so this is one you might want to just kind of listen to everything I say and then uh, pause and write things in. All right, so zinc is pretty easy to fix. We're going to put a three there. But my three here is going to affect my zinc, my oxygen, and my hydrogen. And we want to remember that there's hydrogen and oxygens on this side as well. So here we go. I can change my zinc pretty easily, but now my oxygen, I'm going to do 3 times 1 times 2 plus the 4 to give me 10 total. Hmm. If you need to look that over, look that over again or rewind. Now let's do the hydrogens. 
3 times the 2 plus the 3 is going to give me 9 total. So again, hopefully you caught all those arrows. I'm trying to make sure you're, you're visualizing where all this is coming from. All right, now how about on the right side here? Oh, no, we're still balancing. I'm sorry. So 2. So my zinc is good, but my phosphorus is not. So if I put a 2 here, again, I'm going to put that 2 there to change my phosphorus, but it's changing my hydrogen, my phosphorus, and my oxygen. So again, I like to do things in order. So there's my hydrogen, but don't forget I got hydrogen over here as well. So that gives me a total of 12 hydrogens on the left. There's my phosphorus. That was my original thought to change. And now my oxygen. So 2 times the 4 plus, oh boy, plus the six over here is going to give me a total of 14. Again, there's a lot to think about here. We got parentheses and we have um, elements between the two uh, substances. All right, so zinc looks good. Back to the top of the list. Phosphorus looks good. Hydrogen's not so much. But notice there's hydrogen only in one spot. Woohoo! So what times two is going to give me the 12 that I need? A six. But now again, that six is going to be for the hydrogen and the oxygen. Well, the hydrogen's pretty easy. So six times two gives me the 12, and that's what I was looking for. But the oxygen, uh-oh, so six plus the eight over here is going to give me the 14. But would you look at that? Zinc is good. Phosphorus is good. Hydrogen is good. Oxygen is good. Woohoo! We are now balanced. So isn't that nice to keep the hydrogen and oxygen at the end? So again, pause the video, fill in the blanks. You might even want to draw some of those arrows, maybe color coordinate, um, something I usually do but I didn't get to, um, and then play the rest of the video. All right, examples four and five. I'm going to go a little quicker here now and see if you can do these. So example four, again, make your list and how many on each side. Hopefully you pause and you put the P and the O and you got your list of starting point. All right, here's that P, four on one side, two on the other. Hmm, what should you do? Well, I'm going to put a two in front of the P2O5, uh, diphosphorus pentaoxide. All right, but now remember, it goes to the two and to the oxygen. So I'm going to change my phosphorus amount and I'm going to change my oxygen amount. All right, P's are good. Now let's look at those oxygens. Because I kept them last, this is nice. So it's kind of like that lowest multiple, but because I have 10, I know now that 2 times 5 will give me the 10 that I need. And woohoo, balanced. So again, pause and make any notations in your packet. All right, number 5, make your list. And this is nice. I kept the carbon and hydrogen and oxygen in the correct order. Woohoo! So now this is another tricky one because you have two oxygen areas over here. All right, so carbon was pretty easy. Hydrogen was pretty easy. It's those gosh darn oxygens. So did you get two plus the one for three oxygens on the product side? All right, it's not balanced. What do you want to do first? Well, I would put a three in front of the CO2. All right. Oh, that's to show you the uh, oxygens again. Sorry about that. All right. So here I'm going to put a three. But now remember, it's going to adjust the carbons and the oxygens. But we also have an oxygen on this guy. So we can change the ox uh, carbon to three. Ox uh, three um, and the oxygen here is going to change to seven. All right. Back to the top. Carbons are good, hydrogens not so much, so we're going to put a four, and again, we're going to change the hydrogens and the oxygens, but we also have oxygens over here. All right, so the hydrogens, that's easy to change, and that's what we wanted to change, but don't forget about those oxygens. So four plus the six to give us 10 total. All right, let's keep thinking back to the top. Carbons are good, hydrogens are good, oxygen's not so much, but it's by themselves, woohoo! So we're gonna put a five there and make it 10. So again, pause, and again, I went through some of this a little quicker, um, but you're just constantly going to the top and balancing those elements in order uh, and going back and forth uh, until you have the same amount of each of those elements um, on both sides. All right, guys, see you in class for questions and concerns.